Do you think Robert has thrown in the towel prematurely? Good heavens, what am I sitting on? A uh, swivel chair. Oh, another modern brainwave? Well, not very modern. They were invented by Thomas Jefferson. Why does every day involve a fight with an American? I'll fetch a different one. No, 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 no. I'm a good sailor. I think she's splendid. I think she's cracked. Oh, what on earth's the matter? I'm leaving in the morning, Lady Gransom. I doubt we'll meet again. Do you promise? Yes. Can I do it? If you wish, my lady, of course. Well, I don't know. Yeah, are, you, are you really that tall? Yes, my lady. Thought you might have been walking on stilts. Is it an Irish tradition? What? She means not changing. Of course it isn't, Granny. It might have been. You don't change on the first night of a voyage. Are you going up to the house to welcome the Queen of Sheba? Oh, I think so. Rosamond has no interest in French. If she wishes to be understood by a foreigner, she shouts. That's not fair. Oh, do you think I might have a drink? Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were a waiter. Well, I shall pretend it. I told her to take him. Your quarrel is with my daughter Rosamond, not me. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. How about some house parties? She's been asked to one next month by Lady Anne McNair. Oh, it's a terrible idea. She doesn't know anyone under a hundred. I might send her over to visit my aunt. She could get to know New York. Oh, I don't think things are quite that desperate. What's this? Edith has had an invitation to write a newspaper column. And when may she expect an offer to appear on the London stage? Have we come for dinner? Oh, no, I'm dressed quite wrongly, and I know you have a guest. I doubt Mr Travis has much of an eye for fashion. I'm studying, my lady. These days, a working woman must have a skill. But you seem to have so many. Think of the child. You cannot want your only granddaughter to grow up in a garage with that drunken gorilla. She looks like a slut. Oh, heavens. That's not a word you often hear among the heather. Shall I change? No, don't bother. It's only us. And who are we to warrant any courtesy? There's no logic in it. Oh, no, but if I ever to search for logic, I should not look for it among the English upper class. I really think you should go to bed. No bride wants to look tired at her wedding. It either means she's anxious or been up to no good. <sighs> I won't sleep a wink. Tonight or tomorrow? Sybil vulgarity is no substitute for wit. Well, you started it. <laughs> We'd better go in without her, or it's not fair on Mrs. Patmore. Oh, is her cooking so precisely timed? You couldn't tell. Would happen to a foreigner. It's typical. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not being ridiculous. No Englishman would dream of dying in someone else's house. But if Dr. Clarkson needs free labour, I'd prefer him not to find it in my nursery. But Sybil isn't in the nursery. No, and in case you hadn't noticed, she hasn't been there for some time. You know what I mean. Well, no, not really. We can't pretend it's not respectable when every day we're treated to pictures of queens and princesses in Red Cross uniform, ladling soup down the throat of some unfortunate. But Sybil won't be ladling soup. She'll have to witness unimaginable horrors when she's an innocent. Her innocence will protect her. Yeah, for once I agree with Cousin Isabel. Why don't I drive you? She's taking enough chance with her life as it is. Oh, Granny. Well, I'm going up to London to stay with Rosman for a day or two. I think we'll have Lavinia for tea. You sound as if you're going to gobble her up. <laughs> if only we could. <laughs> this room is so pretty. Has the house always been the Painswick's London home? But there's no always about the Painswick's, my dear. They were invented from scratch by my son-in-law's grandfather. We bought the house when we were married. You make Mr Painswick sound rather a rough diamond, Lady Grantham. Marmaduke wasn't a rough diamond, was he, Mama? No, he was just cut and polished comparatively recently. Why must she be so savage? It's my broken heart, and it was her advice that wrecked it in the first place. Classic Rosamond. She's never more righteous than when she's in the wrong. Oh, really? It's like living in a second-rate hotel where the guests keep arriving and no-one seems to leave. I've left 
space at the front for Jules. I know Lavinia's getting something from Papa. And for me. Though she's so slight, a real necklace would flatten her. <laughs> what should we call each other? Well, we could always start with Mrs. Crawley and Lady Grantham. I thought you didn't like him. But so what? I have plenty of friends I don't like. I was only going to say that Sybil is entitled to her opinions. No. She isn't until she is married. Then her husband will tell her what her opinions are. Oh, cranny. Well, prepare yourself for the worst, not the first page. My poor niece never uses one word when 20 will do. Sorry about the vase. Oh, don't be, don't be. It was a wedding present from a frightful aunt. I have hated it for half a century. I suppose you agree with Robert. Then not for the first time. You suppose wrongly. I'm so looking forward to seeing your mother again. When I'm with her, I'm reminded of the virtues of the English. But isn't she American? Exactly. Oh, dear. I'm afraid the war has made old women of us both. Oh, I wouldn't say that. But then I always keep out of the sun. <laughs> yeah, how do you find Downton on your return? Much the same, really. Probably too much the same, but then I don't want to cast a pall over all the happiness. How could you ever do that? Oh, you two are dressed for a barbecue. And I feel like a Chicago bootlegger. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds almost as peculiar as you look. What about me? Where am I to go? We still own most of the village. Oh. Perhaps I could open a shop. But I know you care about these things as much as I do. Yeah. Nobody cares about anything as much as you do. If she's fighting for her causes again, that seems a good sign. A sign of what? That we should close the shutters and bar the door. Is this your first experience of jazz, Lady Grantham? Oh, is that what it is? Do you think any of them know what the others are playing? You'll be rewarded in heaven. The sooner the better. I feel rather guilty about leaving Isabel behind. Why? She brought a book with her. That should keep her occupied. If I'm going to the theatre, then I ought to change. Uh, yes, I should. You see, I have no wish to be a great lady. No. A decision that must be reinforced whenever you look in the glass. How did they survive? As servants and taxi drivers, milliners, and prostitutes, anything they could lay their hand to. I will not suggest which of those callings the Princess Kuragin was most suited. Well, it is very hard. Rosamond, to... you're addressing your mother, not the committee of the Women's Institute. I can take you for a walk if you like. Why would I want to walk? I'd have come back anyway if it were my daughter's wedding. Then I do not suggest a career in the diplomatic. <laughs> I'm impressed you should come to say goodbye, Mama. Why do you always talk of me as if I were a salmon who laid my eggs in the gravel and then swam back to the sea? <laughs> Poor Dr. Clarkson. I mean, what has he done to deserve that termagant? Mary won't take Matthew Crawley, so we'd better get her settled before the bloom is quite gone off the rose. Is the family an old one? Older than yours, I imagine. But I can handle her. Really? Well, if you can, you must have learned to very recently. Please don't think we're ungrateful for your enthusiasm, Mrs Crawley, but there comes a time when things are best left to the professionals. <laughs>